What's up, everybody? FSC Trucking. Well, we're on our way to Ritchie Brothers. We're over here by Raleigh Durham area, North Carolina. I think the town is Bartlett where we're going to. Anyway, picking up a Ritchie Brothers, we're picking up old FedEx converter dollies. Those are those little dollies that go between your uh, twin trailers on your pup trailers or, or wiggle wagons, as you might call them. There's two places in Wisconsin that's getting them. They're in the uh, immediate area of each other, about 30 miles apart. So, a whole bunch of lot numbers. I'm told there's 10 of them. So, we got to figure a way to get 10 of them on my trailer. That's the idea anyway. Butner, that's the name of the town. What did I say it was? Yeah, we got another three miles. Yeah, town's Butner. Anyways, so that's the game plan. Yesterday we unloaded that uh, big pile of stuff that came out of uh, that recycle center out of Wisconsin where the broker was uh, not even close to his measurements of how big the freight was. Turned out the customer was not happy, but he didn't blame me. He understood the way that deal went. Well, we got through it. So now we're gonna load up today and hammer down. Woke up this morning, it was quite humid, about two hours ago. Not that far from, uh, town of Greenville, there's a little sheets right there. I pulled in there yesterday, edited yesterday's video. That video is actually going to drop today for me, but for you it was probably the last video, um, I would imagine, well, something really weird happened. I don't plan on entering the Twilight Zone or a YouTube uh, swirl, so we'll work with what we got, right? All right, well, 1.3 miles. Get off and go load our converter dollies. probably is going to prove to be a little bit of a challenge. Great slow, but picking and choosing what we take to go, go back with, you know, the proverbial backhaul. This is probably a flatbed load, so, well, it is a flatbed load. And converter dollies, you put that right on a flatbed. So in absence of anything better for a double drop, we'll take this. It's good enough to make enough money on. Wish it was better, but you know what? If I could be back midweek, unload, reload, and boom, turn around. We got Memorial Day uh, for our Labor Day weekend coming up, so it's definitely uh, good for me to get home, which of course the holiday weekend always puts a downward pressure on the rates because guys are wanting to go home. Consequently, for outbound stuff and the month type stuff, there's an upward pressure on it. So but that's not broker freight. That's you know our own freight. Really? Caught by this goofy light for nobody to be here. Ugh. Oh well, this is what it is. Finally, one car. Yellow for the other side.
apart and let an island that big. Don't be surprised if it's ran over. Do we go to the shack first or check in first? Please check in at yard office. So that means we go that way. All right. Because that other Richie Brothers load we did, we had to go to the main office and then go to the yard office. So it's back and forth. You never know what. right there. Alright, we're all set. Call the man with the loader. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, converter. Yeah, I did. Converter dollies. I did mention it. Okay. Follow the loader. red and white Peterbilt 379 Want me this way or crossways? Right here? Oh.
I'll put a chain on it so it won't do that shit again.
Keep curling. All right, stop. Pull it out. Everybody, it is the next day. We're over here in Richmond, Kentucky. I drove out here, could have loved Scott Park. Took care of some editing finally. I really need to look in it at Starlink because the thing I got doesn't really work out well. So I figured I'd show you how I wound up tying it down. We just kind of quit. The idea was yesterday we just kept working, working, working until we got the whole load, you know, loaded up and done. And I said, you know what, I just wasn't going to mess with the camera no more. I got the footage I got. And it started driving to get out here. So we're going to go from here and deliver to Wisconsin tomorrow. So I guess we'll pick up the driving vlog from here. But I'll show you how we did it. This is kind of the basic idea. It's a real funky looking load, but it works. Obviously, we started with this one here. And originally, the idea was just to perch it up. I was thinking, actually, to put it down and then let the tongue slip underneath the, the axles themselves. But it seemed to fit better this way. Maybe the other way would have worked, but the pogo sticks would have created issues. So the idea was flip it up, leave it there, hook the chain across to keep it up. And honestly, that probably would be enough, but I didn't like the idea of all that pressure going down, especially when you put the next one up, all that pressure on that chain, because to be honest, it's laying flat, so it's not adding a lot of downforce as if it was real tall. It's just crossways. Now, that chain's super tight, but it doesn't mean it's the you know the best way but it is the only way to keep it propped up so then it was just put that one and then the next and the next and the next so once we got that done just to make sure we had an extra tie down to keep anything from moving i started running straps over this one went over the tire because there's not another pocket forward to grab with the strap so we just went straight over the tire but again this one's sitting up on the one on the top which that one will address this fugazi thing here in a minute so each one got a chain over the back and a strap over the front and of course sitting on the one in front of it so the idea when we unload it is the back comes off first and then that you know first stop second stop that was the idea now it doesn't matter luckily which one of these go to which because they're both the same buyer so it's just i actually confirmed that with dispatcher like hey which order we got to do me because it doesn't matter five to one location five to the other doesn't matter which one goes which these are the ones that created issues this is one we didn't film because to be honest the camera ran out of battery and i just didn't want to mess with it let me show you this one in particular was a royal pain it had to be set on at that angle because the, it wasn't enough room to get the tire flat on the ground and it didn't want to go you couldn't have it go more forward if we did this fifth wheel bound up on the on the brakes under here and it would hold the tire up and it would wibbly wobbly so we said okay let's just do it like this so we had the tire pressed up against the back of the trailer and set the frame on the frame of my trailer that way it's not wibbly wobbly and then we're good to go that left enough room for this one but not a huge amount of room this one had to get tied separately so we ran two chains one to the top one on the other side pulling forward and then we got two more chains in the back underneath wrapped over the axle and tied up 
to the grab, he grabs on the frame over the axle and then down and the two binders pulling it back that way it can't can't go forward and it can't come back now the one on the front turned out to be the weirdest one of all because it doesn't have anything else to hold it down other than itself so although the one behind it here does help hold the tail end down see but with two flat tires it sits crooked and that is a problem so ultimately what i did same as earlier i put this one chain on the back to keep it tipped up and then we rolled it back enough to where this one was sitting on the back that helps it but also that's the only tie down so we ran it ran it crisscross over the fifth wheel springs and then back down that puts more of a pull behind the axle then up in front of the axle. See, I don't have anything pulling the front down to try to teeter it, but I did just in case if anything were to break, I put my ramps and this board under here in case for whatever reason it did drop, that foot wouldn't land on my airline or my pigtails there. That's the idea with that. I ain't gonna lie, this load was a royal pain in the rear and I just, uh, it was just one of those days. Really wasn't all that hot, but it was stupid humid out. And I was just sweating like a pig. And by the time I got loaded, I was like, uh, let me just go sit in the truck, dry off, bask in the air for a little bit before we got going. Speaking of which, what you hear running right now is the green APU providing the air conditioning for the truck and keeping the engine warm. Now it doesn't need to be right now as far as the engine warm goes, but to be honest, that's where the green APU gets rid of its heat. So it'll run the coolant through my engine and through the engine's radiator to keep itself cool. It works the other way around in the winter. That way the truck will be nice and warm in the winter, keeping the engine warm and the cab warm as well, using the green APU's engine as its heat source. So there you go, that's how we have it. That's why we have it. It's a great product, I absolutely love it. All right, so with that, let me get ahead and shut down the green APU, get Orwell fired up, but let's get going because we got some truck in it though. We got to deliver this crap tomorrow. Alrighty, boys and girls, there you are. 400 horsepower, Caterpillar power comes to life. Uh, yeah, we didn't wake up anybody. Well, maybe we did. Oh, well. It's take time anyway. If I'm up, you're up. Right, Tim? Alrighty. As ready as we're going to be. Let's roll. Right to the floor. 
obviously that helps. Hello, Mr. Smokey Bear. I ain't seen no big trucks. Just a dump truck and the vagrants. Is vagrancies legal in Kentucky? I'm starting to think they just don't care anymore. fingernails down hoping he don't get you know pulled over and inspected because you know you're out here working for a living and the government feels they have the right to stop you at random and just go through your crap meanwhile someone on a street corner begging just let that fly again we're on the assumption that that was well state troopers are DOT certified but the point is stopping at a red light if you wanted to get down the line, why would you pull in behind a dump truck in a red light? If you want to get next to the dump truck and get on down the line, so fair assumption. Nonetheless, these are assumptions, you don't really know for sure, but the fact, the fact is that dump truck driver is going to sit there and worry if he's going to get hassled for working for a living, and the vagrant had no hassle at all. That bothers me. And I know the overwhelming majority of my viewers bust their ass for a living, so. I'd be willing to bet you I'm, uh, I'm in common company on that one. People are like, oh, 
FSC, you have no heart. You know, you make good money. Blah, blah, blah. You know, there was a time where to do right by my sons and to make sure I didn't fall in any issues with courts and stuff when it came to my sons before I got custody of Matthew. There was a time I literally, I called it my homeless years. I literally lived in my RV, the 30-foot RV, parked next to my shop when uh, it was during the Great Recession of 08. The courts were not gonna hear a self-employed guy say he couldn't make his child support payments. They'll just tell you, you know, tough crap, go figure it out. That's what I did. I went without a house and I lived in an RV during the recession. So yeah, I, I know what it's like to grind my face off for very little money just to hand it to my ex-wife to not take care of my kids and provide her boyfriend with a, a, a life that he didn't deserve. And because I was a long haul truck driver, you couldn't change that because how were you gonna get custody while you were being a long haul truck driver? It took many, many years of being able to figure out a way around driving full time. That's what the shop was always about. So I could try to work on other things and drive approximately half the time. But things did get so bad, believe it or not, my ex-wife absolutely abused the position that she had, thinking the courts would never do anything about it. And on the second attempt of getting custody of Matthew, we won. Also because Matthew had spent the last eight years of summers with us, and with Jen home full time, being able to take care of Matt while I was gone the other half the time, we got custody of Matt. Plus at that point, Matt was going into high school. He was old enough to explain to the judge the way things really were. And my older son had already graduated and moved out and was gonna testify against my ex-wife if need be. So the point is, I know what it's like to grind for seemingly nothing. I know what it's like to work and not stand on a street corner with my hand out. Things might have never, things might not have worked the way I wanted to on a consistent level and they've been doing a lot better recently. But I've been working since I was 14 or 15 years old.